Okay, quick update. I'm in a research phase at the moment, so that's why I've not been uploading a shitload. I think it's imperative that I research and understand things fully before I give advice out. I don't want to be like Hamza where I just figure out a concept one week ago and then blast it out like that. I want to actually understand shit fully, so be patient with the uploads. Anyway, reprieves. I found that this was really, really key in the freedom model and in my life. I used to think, okay, I used to think that if I had a stressful day or if I had responsibilities in the afternoon, in the morning I would be like, I'd have that urge to be in my, that urge, right? Really, I was desiring what I perceived to be stress relief. But really, what was going on in my head was, fuck, I have this social thing in the afternoon. Let's say it was a social thing where I didn't really want to go. You know them social things you don't really want to go? Maybe there's people you don't really know that well. You think it's going to be a bit boring, a bit stressful. You're like, oh, I kind of am obliged to go, but I don't really want to. In the morning or in the midday, it would be like, oh, if I PMO, then I'm going to be drained and I'm going to feel retarded and I'm going to feel like shit about myself. And if I feel like that, there's no way I can go to the social thing. That will tip me over the scale. Do you get it? That's how I would feel. So a PMO, I'd be like, I'd literally have this like, then as soon as that thought was going through my head, I'd feel this strong desire for PMO. I'd be like, okay, let's, yeah. I was like, yeah, let's do it. I'd, it. Literally the thought in my head would be time to fuck my life up so that it's easier. What I was really doing was I was, and it wouldn't even be social situations. It might just be life generally. This is what I would do. I would think in my head, if I PMO, then I don't have to deal with like complicated business shit. In my old business that I was doing, I was doing like social media marketing and it was stressful. It was super stressful. And so I think if I PMO, then I don't have to do those cold calls or I don't have to do that really difficult, annoying thing that I have to deal with. Because I'd be too retarded. I'd, be, I'd my brain would be, I'd be like a bit frazzled, and I would just sort of be able to justify to myself, I don't need to do it. Now you might be experiencing this yourself. The key thing to note is in chapter seventeen and eighteen of of the Freedom Model, it talks about how these sorts of things a reprieve isn't due to the effect of PMO, which I I started to realise. Like I kind of knew, but. I would still blame you on the video. The point is, if you're blaming the stress relief on the video, you're going to desire the video because you're viewing the video to, as to have this insane like stress relieving property. And this is how I actually thought. It's ludicrous now looking back on it. But at the time, man, it literally was like, I look at the PM, I start doing the act. And then I feel this insane relief. You know, I didn't know why exactly. I thought it was, and here's the fucked up thing. When you start... Um, conceptualizing it as oh it's the dopamine it's the oxytocin my brain is just so flooded with like dopamine and oxytocin that the stress goes away that's not at all what's happening what you're doing is you're having a different perception of your life now and as your perception changes your stress changes imagine if that social event got cancelled right that social event i was talking about my friend let's say it's like a friend of a friend i don't really want to go and then my friend texts me like oh, by the way, um, this afternoon is cancelled um, because of X, Y, Z reason. I'd be like, whew, thank God, I didn't want to go anyway. Fantastic news, right? The PMO provides, the PMO doesn't provide anything, but when you PMO telling yourself the story of if I PMO, then I'll fuck my evening up and therefore I won't have to go, it's going to provide, you're going to provide that same relief as if you were told that the event had got cancelled. Because in your mind, it's cancelled. If you PMO, you're like, fire's no way I can go. It's like, in the, in the Freedom Model book, they talk about if you get like absurdly drunk, you're like effectively useless. So you can't face life. It's like actually impossible. So mentally, it's less stressful for you. But here's the deal. Here's the kicker, right? The PMO didn't do it. The alcohol didn't do it. You did it. And then, but use the porn as a rationalization the danger is when you believe that the porn does it now you're fucked because now if you believe the porn does it then you believe that let me find fucking hell then you believe that this cream that i use for the spots on my back i, I really want this cream because i want to get rid of these like like i've got like fucked up skin on my back i believe that i need this to solve my problem the chemicals in this in this fucking um like shampoo it's shampoo but using my back 
if you view PMO as a solution in the same way that I view the shampoo as a solution, you're going to desire it, it the, the video. Whereas if, when you realise that you're doing it, you now no longer are going to desire the video because you're doing it. You can just cut out the useless intermediary step, right? Do you see what I'm saying? And they explain this in chapters 17, um, 17 and 18 in TFM. But you've got to really read that slowly and sort of don't be dismissive of it. Like really understand what it's trying to tell you that if it's due to you, then you can just give yourself that reprieve. You don't need the porn to do it. Like let's say that social event in the afternoon, let's say I really don't want to go. I don't need the PMO to give myself a break and just tell myself, fuck it, I don't want to go. I'm not going. I'm just going to give myself a break. You can just give yourself that break without the PMO. And then you're going to experience the same stress relief as if you use the PMO. You'll experience the same stress relief for that reprieve. Now, reprieve isn't the other. It talks about the other two methods of stress relief that we actually give ourselves, but we blame on the substance. The other one being a, a distraction and a and bandaging. In this video, I'm just talking about a reprieve. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to this. Not all of you will. A lot of you might be like, what the fuck is he on about? Um, but a lot of you will relate. And so, again, let me summarise. The stress relief is coming from you, not the PMO. And once you realise that, it's not like, okay, let me... Um, PMO does have this stress relieving property, but I'm going to replace it with not using it. No, it's not about replacement. It's about having an internal belief shift from the PMO causing it to you causing it. Because now if you cause it, why would you need the PMO to relieve stress in that situation? You just you just don't. And you and this is my new favourite quote from TFM. The quote is, you won't feel like you need what you know cannot help you. Okay, let me repeat. You won't feel like you need what you know cannot help you. So let's say I love my headphones. These are amazing. I love just shutting the world out and having these on. Um, I can play audiobooks through them. I play music through them. I love these. I know that these headphones, I, I feel like I need these headphones because they help me out so much in my life. They're so good. Whereas if the headphones were broken, if these headphones were broken, now I know that I don't need it because it's broken. If it's broken, I can't use it. It has no utility to me. So I won't feel like I need it. It's the same with PMO. When you debunk these reasons, you can't, you won't feel like you need something that you know cannot help you. And you might be like, oh, I know porn can't help me. It's fucking up my life. Don't look at the consequences. That's consequential reasoning. That's looking, but you're looking back, you got it back to front. You're, you're saying like, you're saying, right, I know porn can't help me overall because it's fucking your life up. But that's because you're looking at consequences. You're not debunking the front end benefit that it you think it does give you right at the start, right when you make that decision. Just because it turned out disastrously doesn't mean that you didn't perceive there to be some kind of high benefit right at the beginning. Okay? In the TFM, they give this example of like boxing, like I do boxing, right? I want to get really good at it. I want to improve my like fighting ability, okay? If I do boxing sparring and I get punched in the fucking jaw so hard and my like face kind of gets fucked up, is that a illogical consequence? Like, a, like a, does that mean that I didn't want to box at the start? No, I did want to, but I made that decision at the start. It was, a, it was an unfortunate consequence. But if I looked at the front end and I was like, okay, is it really worth boxing for the uh, to get my face mashed up? And I deliberate on that and I think, no, it's not worth it. I've debunked that front end reason. Whereas with PMO, it's a bit different because with PMO, you believe you need it for stress relief. You believe it provides that. And that's such a strong reason that no matter how many like costs and consequences you stack up, you're going to feel deprived if you have to live your whole life without the magic stress relieving medicine it's quite strong and that's why it feels like such a battle again this is only one reason this is why this this problem is actually a little bit complicated because there are many reasons why we do anything there are many reasons why i, I have the headphones right pleasure um 
the noise cancelling so I can't hear the world if I'm out and about. I love that the audio quality is good. I love that I can listen to podcasts on it. I love that I can listen to music on it. I love that it is wireless so I can wear it and it's fine. I like that it's comfortable. There are many reasons why I use it. There are many reasons why anyone PMO. So once you get this, repri- once you debunk this reprieve and these stress relief reasons, you'll find that your desire goes down considerably. Because you, again, as I said, you cannot feel like you need what you know cannot help you. So you, your desire goes down for this reason. But then you might have another reason of, oh, I feel addicted or whatever. You might feel, oh, I feel addicted. I feel like I need to stay up to date with the porn stars. I feel like I need to educate myself about this fetish or whatever like there are many reasons why you can do it so this is a process of plucking weeds it's not like after this one thing goes you're going to be free forever that you'll feel more free but as i said there are many reasons why we do certain things so let's say let's say for example my headphones um the noise cancelling broke let's say the noise cancelling broke that's one reason that's i'm a bit bummed out now oh fuck the noise cancelling doesn't work anymore shit but I'm still going to wear it. I'm still love these. That's like one reason to go that I still love the headphones. They still provide me with that good sound quality. They still feel good on like they're comfortable. I can still listen to my podcast on it. I can still listen to music on it. It's not a problem. So what I'm saying is that even though, even if one reason gets nuked, you still w- may desire it for other reasons. So it has to be a systematic debunking of myths. All right. And you might get to a stage where you're like, oh, I just like the little physical buzz of masturbation. And that's fine. You don't have to completely debunk every reason. Like, as long as it's sufficient. Like, the thing with the stress relief one is it's so magical and it's so insanely appealing when you believe that something can instantly take you out of stress. Like, let's say you believe that PMO helped you relieve stress and something horrible happened to you. You just, you got a bad grade, you've lost a job, you found out some really bad news. And you, and then you have to live your life without your elixir to make things better. That's kind of shit. So because it's so appealing, it's such a good, it's such a good perceived benefit that the desire is very strong for it. The good news is, of course, that it's a perceived benefit. It doesn't actually exist in the substance. It's only mental, and therefore you can get the same reprieve without the PMO. So we don't have to live without our magic elixir because our magic elixir isn't an actual elixir it's not a real thing it's a mental um decision that we make okay i'm gonna let myself have the afternoon off fuck it i'm not going to this social situation i don't need pmo for it pmo never does it anyway it was all me the whole time so seeing as it was me the whole time i could just do it without it why do i need this unnecessary intermediary why do i need to cut out the middleman why do i need this unnecessary middleman okay i hope that makes a lot of sense remember you can't you cannot feel you won't feel like you need what you know cannot help you read chapter 17 18 of tfm really really good like really really good and when you realize when you break this belief and you start to write porn doesn't do that gee it's a video it, it doesn't do that i do that and therefore if i'm doing it i can do it without pmo i don't need it your desire is going to go because you now no longer have that perceived magical elixir and you're not losing out here because you're still getting the benefits in your mind you just don't need the unnecessary intermediary so you can have your magic elixir in your own mind without the heavy costs of pmo you don't need to do it and you're like fuck yeah this is way better and now your pdp you're moving towards greater happiness because your new happiest option isn't let me use pmo to get my reprieve it's now i'm going to give myself the reprieve and i'm just going to fucking chill the fuck out and i don't need to use that i don't need to have the heavy costs of using pmo and that might genuinely be happier for you or it might be the case that there are other reasons, other false beliefs, other mythology that you need to debunk, which is fine. And that's what the book is for. And that's why the book is so good is because it goes through all of those reasons. And they've also got a podcast as well that you can check out. Um, and I, you've also got my videos as well. So any porn specific ones, um, I'm going to be uploading a lot more. As I said, I'm in a research phase right now, so I'm not going to be uploading super high quality videos anytime soon. But I think this is worth it for you because you're not going to get the information as soon as possible, but you're going to get... V- like good like better quality information and it's going to be better presented and it is worth it and at the end of the day you don't have to wait for my videos read the book go for look go for the horse's mouth you know solve this problem you can do it on your own you don't need to wait for me i'm not some kind of guru i'm i've just learned from this book do you get it 
like I'm not coming up with anything like incredibly unique I'm just taking their ideas and applying it to PMO which is what you should do I'm a young guy I'm not prepared to invent new concepts out of my arse when the truth is there and has been there since the dawn of time because this is the truth it's always existed people will just create a lot of myths and that's what's new actually the myths not the truth the truth has always been there so yeah yeah like these vids subscribe if you haven't already get in contact with me on telegram and look in the description for the free book read it all read the fuck out of it don't stick to my videos only read the fuck out of that book get educated on this stuff because that's going to be the quickest way for you to quit trust me that's it